let's now talk about Newton's laws in circular motion. And right now we're still focused on uniform circular motion, but a lot of this will just generalize when we move away from uniform uh, motion in particular. So right now, you've already seen this picture. It's defining our RTZ or RTZ a coordinate system. And remember that Newton's second law was expressed as vectors that F naught equals MA. So this isn't too hard to think about then. The net force must point towards the center of the circle. Why? Because that's our centripetal acceleration, right? So we said that AC was towards the center, right? This is what was necessary for a uniform circular motion, which I abbreviate UCM. So UCM is just uniform circular motion. So AC is a constant. It depends on the speed of the object and the radius that it's traveling in. So if we have uniform circular motion such that our object is not speeding up or slowing down, our centripetal acceleration is constant. So that means our net force is constant. Constant in this case, again, meaning in magnitude and in direction, it's not constant if we talk about it in terms of x and y, but if we use the RTZ uh, coordinate system, we say, ah, yes, it is always towards the center. So it is then a constant direction. Now, something that's really important here, and I'm going to try to also describe this through example, but it's really important. There's no extra force towards the center, right? So the force towards the center is just your net force. Right, that's all. Now we have to identify what are all of the forces in the problem. But the net force is what points towards the center. It isn't that you say net force equals zero and now I have a force pointing towards the center. The only thing that you need to worry about in uniform circular motion is your net force towards the center. So this is something that's um, a little counterintuitive and again, we're going to practice it, and this is also why it's so important that we start by remembering F net, not just F, but F net, your total force, is what is equal to mass times acceleration from Newton's second law. Going backwards now and talking about Newton's first law, we now have a slightly different picture because we now get to say our F net moves towards the center of the circle. But remember that Newton's first law is telling you that if there is no net force, your object is going to travel in a straight line at a constant speed. So we know that if we are changing velocities, forces are required. And as you can see, your velocity vector is changing from one point to another. So again, we must have that net force towards the center. And note here that it's perpendicular, that all we are doing is changing the direction of velocity. We are not changing the speed. Again, this is uniform circular motion. So for uniform circular motion, which is what we have here, we actually have perpendicular force and velocity. So we're changing the direction only. So what happens if that central force suddenly vanishes, right? My string snaps and there's no force. Well, then my particle travels in a straight line. So think about this, and this is a little bit tricky, that if I am, say, spinning a rock in a circle, in a horizontal circle, that if my string suddenly snapped, the rock is going to go tangential to the circle at that point. It's not going to keep going in a circle. It's not going to go straight out, right? It's, if it was here when the string snapped, it's not going to fly out this way. It's going to fly forwards. Whatever the velocity is at that point will continue on in a straight line at a constant speed if there are no forces acting on it. Now, obviously, in real life, we have gravity. So frequently, when we think about these problems, it might be helpful to think about, for instance, spinning an object that's on like a low friction surface so that you don't actually have to worry about gravity. So first law is telling you if your central force vanishes, your particle is going to continue on in a straight line, which was at the time tangential to the circle. We are now going back to Newton's second law. So initially it was just conceptually that our net force must point towards the center of the circle because that is where our centripetal acceleration was. That was the acceleration we had. Now 
then we talked a little bit about Newton's first law, but now let's go back and actually do this mathematically. And again, I don't want you to focus entirely on the math. Please think about your free body diagram and drawing that very carefully. That's where the physics is. But now let's think about what does it mean, mathematically, for uniform circular motion. So this radial acceleration is what we used to call, or I guess still do call, our centripetal acceleration. And again, note that I've broken our net force into three components. I'm using the book's notation here. And again, F net has three components, right? You have your F net in your R direction in the R hat, right? R hat direction. Plus, and I'm definitely going to run out of space, tangential direction, T hat plus F net in the Z direction. Right, so again, once I write it this way, I mean that I'm just concerned with the magnitude of one of these components. So we have to add up all of the forces in the R, T, and Z directions. Now, I have to have a specific problem before I know what those forces are. Those should be coming from your free body diagram. But we can go back to what we understand about uniform circular motion and say that, oh, well, my centripetal acceleration is what my radial acceleration is because it was radial it was towards the center and it was v squared over r or omega squared times r these are just two different ways to write it based on the relationship between v and r and now we multiply it by mass because that is the relationship between acceleration and force so your radial net force has to be equal to mv squared over r or again this uh, lowercase omega, the Greek letter that looks like a little w, that's your angular speed. V is your linear speed. What's happening in the tangential direction? Well, your acceleration there is zero. And this is going to be true for uniform circular motion, that if you had a tangential acceleration that would correspond to an angular acceleration, Right? We talked about that with non-uniform circular motion. You do have a tangential acceleration. And so later in a couple more sections, we will come back to that. Finally, the z direction is perpendicular to the circle. Right? So it's, in the, it's heading away from the circle, not in the plane. And here, we're, that's also going to be zero. That if I'm spinning a rock in a circle, we're not also accelerating in, you know, up off the ground. Um, I guess that could happen, but that's really going to make problems very uh, complicated and not actually uh, represent many real world phenomena. So for uniform circular motion, we don't have to worry about these two directions, or at least let me rephrase that. The accelerations are equal to zero. You might still have forces, but now you can know that the sum of all of those forces in this direction must be equal to zero but the sum of your forces in the radial direction is mass times your centripetal acceleration. So this is again the important part here. There's no special force that is giving you your, your circular motion. It is the sum of all of your radial forces giving you the radial component of F net, and that is what leads to circular motion. Let's talk through an example here. And this is an example from the book of a parent spinning a child in a cart. So this is a cart that is actually on the ground. There's a rope here and the person, the, the parent, is spinning the child in a circle. So note that this says top view. So we are looking down at this point. So the reason we would want to specify that is because when we come and draw a free body diagram, we need to think a little bit about the normal force and the gravitational force. The other thing to note here is that this child is going to be in very different positions, right? Different position, blah, each part of the circle, in which case your forces are going to point in a different direction. What you should be doing is ideally having these two diagrams represent the same point, right? So remember that we're going to say that our tangential direction is forward, our radial direction is in and z is then z is out of the page out of page oop um so what that looks like is this point there's tension in this rope right so tension here 
gravity is down. Gravity is not in the tangential direction. Gravity is not pulling the child forward. Gravity is acting in the negative z direction into the page. The normal force is pushing the cart up away from the ground. Again, this is top view. So that's what's important is that this is denoted top view, this is denoted edge view, otherwise this doesn't make a lot of sense. And even in this picture, I would encourage you to write that coordinate system, you know, if not over top of it, which might not, not make sense, you know, at least this way. Right? And there's a convention uh, that gets used so this x is into page or board or whatever have you circle with a dot into it is out of page so in this case because my z is coming out of the page you can think of that as like looking at the the tip of an arrow that's my z hat so i've defined my coordinate system for this picture and that then it relates to my free body diagram, we see that actually there are no forces in the tangential direction, right? This is one of those situations where really what you're interested in is the radial direction and the z direction. Now there's a net force. Why is there a net force? Well, one, there's only one force in the radial direction, so you need to have a net force there. But there's a better way to think about it. The best way to think about this is to look at the motion and to say, based on the motion, is there a net force? And you say, well, yes, of course. I see that my object is traveling in a circle. If it's traveling in a circle, there must be a centripetal acceleration towards the center of the circle. That centripetal acceleration is related to my net force, so there must be a net force towards the center of my circle. So that is the direction you should go. You should figure out what your net force is based on the motion, put it on your free body diagram, and then say, hey, is that consistent? Yes, it is, because I only have one force in the radial direction that is pointing in the same way. So how you would actually do a calculation, in this case it was calculating omega, is you would then find uh, what the centripetal acceleration is based on the tension because you now know what your net force is, and you can calculate it from there. But again, here I'm just trying to focus on the setup and how you actually use these coordinate systems and draw your pictures in a way where it's clear what direction everything is going.